Flipping is an extremely high risk business. You're buying something very cheap, you're using expensive debt, and you're targeting a high return. We have now shrunk our buy box to specific cities that our guys are used to working in, they're good at working in, and we know their process so we can mitigate any kind of plan variation or risk on that deal. Homes on busy roads or bad neighbors, airplane noise, uh, weird layouts, those homes typically sell for five to 10% less than a home that doesn't have these negative features. Thanks for tuning in to Bigger Pockets. I am James Daynard, and today we are talking about how to reduce risk and pivot your 2023 flipping strategy. So before we dig into how to reduce risk and how to pivot your 2023 investment strategy, let's talk about what we've seen the last 24 months in real estate and in flipping in general. So 2021 and 22 were the years of high yield investments. What does that mean? That means anything that you were buying with assets was accelerating at a rapid pace. We saw appreciation up to 30 to 35 percent in some markets over a two-year basis which is absolutely crazy that also made it very easy to make money as a wholesaler or a flipper you would put something under contract or you buy that property that thing was going up in value no matter what you did so as flippers you could kind of get a little bit lazy during these strategies you could go over budget it could go over the timelines and you were still crushing that deal because the market was appreciating so fast now what we've seen is the fed has stepped in and they've started increasing rates there's less money in the market the cost of money has increased over 30 to 40 percent for many potential buyers that is going to naturally slow down the market and we've seen a sudden drop off in sales almost 30 to 40 percent nationwide because the cost of money is so hard. So what does that mean for flipping? That means you need to execute the right plans and look at deals differently. You can't buy on slimmer margins. You can't use those high comps in the market. You have to really dig into your underwriting. So the forecast for 2023 still looks a little shaky. They're predicting a recession. Interest rates are still continuing to rise. Home values could continue to depreciate a little bit. And that is okay as long as you have the right strategy. We bought this home 60 days ago in a declining market. We feel 100% protected on this deal. And we're gonna talk about the steps that we took on this to make sure that this was a low risk, high yield investment. So let's take a look and let's talk about how we reduce that risk. The first thing you want to do before you start buying more flip properties in 2023 is narrow your buy box. Inventory was at an all-time low. It was really hard to get a deal. So as investors, we were looking at slimmer deals in areas that we weren't used to buying in. I was buying in all sorts of different neighborhoods just to keep the capital working. That meant I was buying in areas I'm not used to, which usually means the inefficient projects, longer projects, and going over budget. So as inventory increases, it allows you as an investor to start targeting the areas that you're most efficient in. We have now shrunk our buy box to specific cities that our guys are used to working in, they're good at working in, and we know their process so we can mitigate any kind of plan variation or risk on that deal. In addition to, we've narrowed down how much capital that we want to put into the flip space. As investors, we're buying rental properties, we're syndicating properties, we're lending hard money, we're buying flips. It is our responsibility to evaluate how much cash we have and allocate to the certain sectors that we want to invest in. But make sure that you have liquidity on the sidelines just in case that deal goes sideways. What we've seen recently is investors are starting to run out of cash. They're taking longer to sell and people are running out of reserves. When you're buying any kind of short term high yield investment that's giving you a high profit potential or high cash on cash return, you need to make sure you have that money sitting on the sidelines to cover any kind of mishaps. You don't want to be running out of your projects as you're trying to get them sold with more expensive debt. The next thing you want to do is evaluate what's your appetite for risk. As we know, the market is kind of transitioning down. It's a riskier market. That's a higher risk investment. And so as an investor, you only know how much risk you want to take on. The fix and flip space can be very risky. It can be very rewarding. I know we have crushed the last two years and made an absorbent amount of money, but it can also go the other way. As professional flippers that have been doing this 18 years, we are always buying. We don't sit out on the market. We continue to buy at all times. As the market cools down and the market conditions change, we have to adjust what our threshold for risk is. So what we've done in every area that we're looking at deals is we've adjusted the margins based on geographical locations. We, the areas that we like best, we're buying at a little bit thinner mar margins. In, outskirts areas that we are comfortable buying in, but we might not like as much, or that has a maybe an economic forecast that could be shrinking, we're gonna buy at an even larger 
uh, margin. So that's us defining our buy box. We know what returns we'll buy in specific markets. For example, in Bellevue, Washington, it's one of my favorite markets. It's got a lot of economic growth in there. There's a lot of money there. It's a great place to live. We might buy deals where we're targeting 35 to 40% in today's market, whereas we were buying them at a 25% about nine months ago. We've adjusted our margin up. We still like those deals at those pricing, and we will buy if we see a house hit that margin. Now, maybe like where we are right now in Mount Lake Terrace, I might not like the market just as much as Bellevue. So we might adjust our margins to 50% cash on cash return in these areas because we don't quite feel as passionately about it. That's still an adjustment up from where it was before. We were buying deals at 35 to 40% cash on cash return in Mount Lake Terrace before. So you just need to adjust your margins up and what your expectations are. As long as you know what you'll buy that deal at in that certain area, it makes it easy for you to go find that deal, be comfortable with your offer because it's hitting all your thresholds. So the second thing you can do to reduce risk in 2023 for flipping is buy deals with multiple exit strategies. So what we've done is we've actually adjusted our buy box pretty dramatically. Over the last 24 months, we had all sorts of different deals, low end, cheaper deals, mid-grade ones, and luxury flips. Right now, we've sold off almost all of our inventory, but we have three luxury flips going that we're gonna be selling for four and a half million, three million, and 1.8 million. These are more expensive deals. So to hedge against that, that portfolio, we, we wanted to target our next round of flips as lower end ones that have multiple exit strategies and that are in a cheaper price point. It balances out our risk portfolio with our flipping. So why is this a low risk deal with multiple exit strategies? We targeted this property, it was listed at 350 on the MLS. We actually would have paid 375 for this about back in the spring. We targeted a price of 275 on this deal. The reason we came up with 275 is the math worked always on fix and flip and we could keep it just in case it didn't flip off. We're putting 110 into the renovation, which is going to completely transform this house, remodel the whole thing, all new systems, electricals, plumbings, we're rebuilding the whole thing. And we have a target value to sell this for 575 to 599. So if the market continues to decline about 10%, that's going to knock about fifty dollars to $60,000 off the potential profit. We are walking in with $75,000 anticip anticipated profit right now in the deal. So if the market comes down 10%, we can still sell it and make a little bit of money. Now, if it drops 15%, that's where we go in the red. So our next step on this, and this is why this is a low risk deal, is we can refinance this property at a 7.5% mortgage. Our monthly payment on this is gonna be roughly about 22 to 2300 a month, and it's gonna require us to leave about 30 to 40 grand in the deal, max. This property will rent for 28 to 2900. And we know that because as we came up with our offer price, we ran our flip numbers, where's the worst case scenario. Then we ran our rent numbers. We found that we can cover our mortgage plus a little bit of cash flow and still hang on to this deal and wait through the market transition until it proves again. We know when the market was at the height of this, this property would have sold for 650000 So there's some runway in this deal to keep it for a long-term basis. In addition to, this property has some development upside. We can actually build a dadu in the backyard as well. So if I have to keep this as a rental property, I'm not that mad about it. It's got good potential upside down the road. This deal is very low risk because we can flip it, we can absorb a 15% market drop on today's values and still break even roughly. And if we don't break even, we can rent it, cash flow it, and keep it for a long-term play down the road. So multiple exit strategies allow you to move throughout a declining market. The lower the deal, or the cheaper the price on the deal, the more flexibility you have in keeping it. The next thing we're doing is we are being more conservative on our underwriting. For, again, for the past 24 months, it was kind of like find the high comp, where's the max potential of this property? So what we've done recently is we are using only very, very similar and recent comps. We're keeping our comp radius very tight. We don't want to go into multiple different neighborhoods that we had to do about 24 months ago. Again, the inventory was so low 24 months ago, we had to kind of stretch into different areas and interpret the data. Now we're staying very tight inside of the blocks that we're in. We don't want to go into different neighborhoods. We want to stay specific to what's trading. In addition to, we're only using very recent comps. We're using actives, 
pendings and solds within the last 60 days. This gives us fresh data with the high current rates that's telling us where our buyers are at. If we have a recent sold 45 days to 60 days ago at a certain price, but then the actives are now below it, we are actually gonna establish the value a little bit below those actives. That's the trend. So by using actives and pendings, it keeps us ahead of the trend and communicating with brokers. In addition to on your underwriting, we're padding our performa all the way around. We're adding five and 10% contingencies to all of our construction costs, even though we're predicting the construction costs are gonna start to come down with the, mar uh, with the housing market kind of going into a recession. By having this extra padding in, it gives us more room if the house doesn't sell because the, the savings on the budget goes back into the profit. And lastly, in our underwriting, things that we're doing is we're looking at our overall plan. Like in this house in Mount Lake Terrace, we had a two bedroom, one bath home, a kitchen that was kind of boxed in. There's all sorts of different comparables on this. There was a couple high comps that just sold at 620 and 623, but they had a second bathroom. Uh, the kitchens had been relocated around. This is not only gonna cost more money to do it in my rehab plan, but it's gonna cost a substantial amount more time. That's a full permit job. I'm gonna need probably 60 to 90 days of a permit review in this specific city. So as we were evaluating the house, we didn't go for highest and best use. We went for highest and best use to keep the project moving forward. So we're designing our plans that keep the permits under control and keep it things moving forward. On this one, we were able to get our permit over the counter. The reason being, we weren't moving walls. We're updating all the mechanicals, we're doing all the plumbing, we're updating all the fixtures, but we adjusted our value down for the footprint that we're working into. Even though if we would have spent an extra 15 grand on the remodel adding that bathroom, it could have increased the value almost 40, it might not have been the right plan. It would have stretched us out an additional three to four months that would have made us exposed to different types of market conditions. The next thing you wanna to do to reduce risk or avoid risk in this next market, get better buys on properties with negative impact properties. Homes on busy roads or bad neighbors, airplane noise, uh, weird layouts, those homes typically sell for five to 10% less than a home that doesn't have these negative features. That can make a huge difference on, on, on your bottom line. They also take substantially longer to sell because it takes that special buyer to buy them. So if you're buying with anything weird, you wanna make sure that your margin is exponentially increased. I'm usually expecting about a 50% margin increase if I'm buying something weird. That's gonna be a problem for me. It's a headache house, it has more risk, I need to be getting a better buy on that. If not, I'll just go buy a normal deal. So things with busy roads, airplane noise, weird neighbors, buy them cheaper or avoid them all the way through. In addition to homes with no permits on additions, those are things that are also weird. Those can add very long delays in your permitting time. So stay clear from those or get the right terms on them. Avoid weird. Things that we're doing to reduce our risk and pivot in 2023 is we are adding in more debt cost into every deal. As we know, hard money rent lender rates have increased. Also, days on markets have increased. We went from being around nationally around 12 to 13 days up to over 30 nationally. That's a big increase. If that trend continues, we could be up to 60 days by the second quarter of next year. And that is okay, but we need to account for it in our performa. So before we were factoring that we would carry properties for about six months. That was our average over our whole portfolio, about 6.1 months. Now what we're factoring for is we're at putting in at about eight to nine months. We're adding two and a half months worth of interest payments into the deal. So if it sits on the market, we're not worried about it. We've already accounted for the cost. It's already been factored for in the profit and we just have to wait for that buyer. And additionally, it, do, it takes the stress off the deal. You never want to be that flipper putting your house up for sale that's desperate to sell it. You want to be logical. You got to let buyers get through these properties and evaluate them. Look to see if that's where they actually want to live. That's how people normally buy homes, right? They get to go look at it, they get to think about it, then write the offer. This gives you the time to do so. So add more debt into your cost. In addition to get access to more capital. Before we're buying deals, we're getting pre-qualified by a local bank, a traditional lender, and a hard money guy. That way, if the flip goes bad, we know what our exit strategy is and how we can pay off that expensive short-term debt and mitigate that risk. So get lots of access to different types of banks and capital. It will help you get through your deal. So as we walk into a new market right now, you know, things to think about, right, is what is your appetite for risk? If you're an investor that doesn't like risk, flipping was never built for you. Flipping is an extremely high risk business. You're buying something very cheap, you're using expensive debt, and you're targeting a high return. 
Flipping just might not be for you in general, and that's okay. There's other things like bird properties, long-term holds that you can still build wealth in it. If you are a flipper and you've seen the rewards, you wanna figure this out. I've heard countless amount of times that, hey, I'm gonna sit flipping out for a year. For guys like me, that's a good thing. My competition just fell dramatically and there's lots of good buys. As long as you adjust and pivot for 2023 and how you buy, it, you can reduce the risk and actually maximize out your potential growth. No one was flipping homes, or very little people were flipping homes in 2008, and it changed my whole trajectory in life. Competition wasn't much, we were able to buy a lot of deals, we were able to make money, save it, and then go buy holdings with it. So it's up to you as an investor on how you wanna mitigate risk. I can buy these homes in today's market and still feel perfectly comfortable by taking the steps that we just talked about and reducing risk, getting access to capital, multiple exit strategies, different game plans. The more planning I have, the lower risk this is. So I wanna thank everyone for tuning in to Bigger Pockets. Make sure that you like and subscribe below. And for more information about flipping or just investing in general, check us out on Instagram at Jdane Flips or on YouTube at Project RE and check out our newly launched website, jamesdaner.com.